Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I'm from executeautomation.com and welcome to part 7 of our C Sharp for Automation testing video series. And in this video we'll be talking about understanding types and this video is a continuation of part 5 and 6 since in this video again we're going to talk about another type of C Sharp which is var type. So one of the most commonly used type in C Sharp for automation to reduce the headache of specifying the types beforehand is this var type or otherwise called as a implicitly typed variable. So what is this implicitly typed variable? An implicitly typed local variable is a strongly typed just as if you have declared the type yourself, but the compiler determines the type during runtime and the compile time. So what does that mean? So you don't really have to specify something like this, where you specify double income tax is equal to 2334.234d as we did in our previous video. Rather, you can specify something like this, war income tax is equal to the same value. So what does this really mean? Which means the compiler will know that this particular type that you are specifying income tax as a var is actually a double, which means the compiler will automatically know during compile time that this particular value that you have specified in the right hand side of the income tax is actually a double. Some more concrete example, as you can see here in our previous video, we were specifying the login page as an object for this particular uh, variable login page. But this time I have specified this as a var type or otherwise called as a implicitly typed variable. And once I hit the dot, the intelligence is automatically bringing the type members like the username and the click button of that particular class login page and this avoids the explicit casting of, uh, of the type like login page something like that. So this is kind of very very useful. So if this doesn't really make any sense for now, let's flip to Visual Studio and see how things works. Alright, so this is the same project which we have been working so long in our course and what I'm going to do this time is I'm just going to change a little values in here. So I was saying this, the double income tax is equal to 2324.234d, right? So instead of double, let's specify the var type. But before doing that, let's do a console.write line and see what is this particular type. There is a very cool method available in C Sharp. If you hit dot for any type available in C Sharp, it's actually coming from the object uh, class. This guy, the get type method, very, very helpful. If you just use this method and if you hit dot and you can see there are so many properties and methods available for this particular uh, get type method. And one of the method or the property which I'm pretty much interested in is a name property. If I use this, it will actually show you what type of uh, uh, type it is. So it will give you the name of that particular type, right? So cool. So uh, let's, uh, let's try to run this and see what is the type that I'm going to return in. So if I run this, I will get an exception here, but uh, let's try to comment this code out because it is going to throw us some exceptions. So I'm going to save this and then I'm going to hit uh, start. And you can see that it is showing me the value as double here, which is nothing but the type is actually double, which is great, right? Let's close this. And since it is double here, we have already specified it is bringing us the name as double, which is super cool. What if I specify this as a var type or implicitly typed variable? And if I save this, so right now I did not specify any type. And if I hover the mouse here, you don't even have to run this code and see what it is. If I just hover the mouse here, you can see that it's showing that the struct uh, system dot double, it automatically knows that, that you are specifying a double here. What if I give something like this? Aha, it's a string type, right? If I now hover the mouse right here, see, it automatically turned into system.string, which is super cool. This is what is the power of our implicitly typed variable. So now let's do this. I'm gonna see what is the particular type name. Let's try to print this out and see. And this time also it is double, which is great. So this is how we can see how the power of implicit type variable can be utilized. And the last example which I'm going to show you uh, for the implicit type variable is actually this guy. Remember the casting problem that we were facing in our previous video? If I specify wrongly for this particular uh, variable, 
login page as a user list page if I try to uh, cast it wrongly as an explicit cast then uh, we will get an error if I try to run this time you can see that uh, the cast of this particular type is not valid which is, uh, which is correct of course it is not valid so in order to deal with uh, these kinds of problem to make this even more strongly typed uh, what I'm going to do I'm just going to comment this code out I can specify instead of object which is a raw type to a implicitly typed variable var and now if I specify var this login page is actually a login page type super cool right so now I can just use this if I just specify uh, use the login page dot you can see that it brings me up the properties like variable name uh, click button all those stuff and I don't even have any problem with this now I will not ever get any of the problem with the uh, with this kind of issues that we are saying the invalid cast exception because we already know what type it is and now if I run this you can see it still works it's no problem right so this is how we can make use of our implicit type variable in our C sharp thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day